hello and welcome back to my youtube channel i hope you guys are doing good in this video we will learn how to implement a round robin task assignment where tasks are already assigned to users we will first calculate how many tasks each user is holding and then proceed to distribute remaining tasks using a round robin approach so let's walk through it step by step first things first let's understand what round robin assignment is and how it works so a round robin system is a way to assign tasks to a group of users in a cyclic manner. Imagine you have a task and you need to assign it to a list of users. You want each user to take turns without repeating the same person twice in a row. For example, we have a team of four members A, B, C and D. We want to distribute tasks in a way where the first task goes to A, the second to B, then C and D and the cycle repeats. In Appian, we can achieve this by using an expression tool that ensures each user gets assigned a task in a rotating sequence. Click on the new and select the type of object you want to create from the designer menu. I am calling it AS Round Robin. In this scenario, we already have a list of existing tasks that are assigned to different users. Our goal is to first determine how many tasks each user is holding and then assign any remaining tasks to a users in a round robin manner. So I have already started by initializing the local task variable which holds the existing tasks that are already assigned to users. And now I am using the map function to create this list and let's say each task will contain two keys task id and assignee. User A is holding two tasks, so is user B. C and D are holding one task each. So here we have initialized the list of existing tasks. Each task has a task ID and an assignee, indicating which user currently holds the task. Next we define the local users variable, which holds the list of users who will be involved in the round robin task assignment. In this example, we have four users A, B, C, D. This list can be extended or modified depending on your needs. If you want to retrieve users from a group, you can use the group members function, which returns a list of users who are members of a particular group. Now we need to count how many tasks each user is currently holding. So we will iterate over the list of users and count the tasks that have each user as the assignee. In this step, we use the a bank for each function to loop through each user in the local users list. For each user, we use where contains function to find all tasks where the assignee matches the user. This function is going to search for items within a list. This function takes two parameters, values and array, and searches for items within a list. The value to search for and the list of strings to search within. Here, fe item represents the current user being processed in each iteration. If the value is found, it returns the index of the item in the list. And when there is no match, the function returns an empty array. In the first iteration, the user is a at the rate gmail.com which I am searching through local task and the first two rows of local task has the same assignee a at the rate gmail.com in that case it is gonna return two indices right let me just show you guys what this local number of task returns in the first iteration we have two items one and two because the first two tasks are assigned to the current user which is a at the rate gmail.com that's why it is returning the indices of first two tasks one and two in the second iteration again we have two items three and four and the current user is p at the rate gmail.com who is holding two tasks task id three and four and it is returning the indices of task id three and four in the third iteration the current user is c at the rate gmail.com which has only one task with him which is at index 5. Let's display the task count for each user. 
This will help us determine which user has the fewest tasks and should receive additional tasks in the round robin assignment. Then we use the count function to determine how many tasks are assigned to that user. Here we are displaying the count of tasks assigned to each user, which helps us see who has the most and the least task. Now that we know how many tasks each user has, let's assign any remaining task to users in a round robin fashion. Next, let's find out who has the fewest or no task. So here I am using minimum function to find the minimum value from this list of numbers. Once the minimum value is found, we will wrap it inside where contains function to search for that minimum value in local count number of tasks. And based on the index, we will retrieve the user with the minimum task assigned from the local users list. So local get least busy user is returning 3 and 4 as the indices which means the users which are sitting at index 3 and 4 have the least number of tasks. So here we have a scenario where we have two users with the least number of tasks and we wanna assign the next task to the first user with the least number of tasks. So we will check if the length of local get least busy user is equal to 1 which is not in our case it's 2 right length of local get least busy user is not equal to 1. If it is equal to 1, then based on the index returned by local get least busy user, we retrieve the user from the local users list. Here, using index function where the local users is my data, local get least busy user is my index. If it is not equal to 1, then we select the first one. Retrieving the element at position 1 in the list local get least busy user. Let's test a setup and it returns c at the rate gmail.com as the next assignee. That means the next task should be assigned to this person. To test the rule, you can simply pass different task numbers as input parameters and see the output. As the task number increases, you will notice the assignment cycles through the users in the order defined. It is currently returning a list of strings. To get rid of one, we can wrap this index function inside to string function, which will do the job. If you can see here, after wrapping the index function inside to string, it has converted the list into a single string. To summarize, we started with a list of existing tasks that were already assigned to users. We then counted how many tasks each user was holding. And based on that, we performed a round robin assignment to evenly distribute any remaining task. And that's it. For more app and tips and tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in my next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.